Today I would like to continue our series that we started last week about uh, magic. Essentially, uh, the title of the series is uh, Magic, I Can Change the World from Where I Am. And I just want to, to deepen into that a little bit by exploring this idea of the nature of reality, in, especially the invisible reality. It seems to me like most of us, most of the time anyway, believe that what we see is the world. It is Perhaps. as it is, but there's much more here than meets the eye. When we think in spirituality, often we think in kind of binary ways. It seems to me, we talk about God. You hear a lot of people talk about God and humans, God and humans. But you wonder if God is everything and all that is and the same life force that formed all these life forms on planet Earth, would there not be many layers of invisible things that we cannot see as well, spiritual things that we can't see as well? So there would be a, a cause from this argument to say that there would be angels, there would be um, ideas that are floating out there, there would be archangels, we might have other things that we don't even have good words for. This really seems to add to the possibilities, if you think about it, of the things we can do from where we are to affect the world around us. That if we could draw on the energies of these other non-physically visible beings or ideas or energies that are in the invisible world, just as perhaps just as crowded as our physical world is with life forms and ideas, that we could maybe draw on our helpers from the spirit world to help us do what is ours to do. This idea that there is more to this world than we can see, that would, could possibly include the idea that ideas are floating around out there, creative imaginative ideas are floating around there, and that all we have to do, well, not all we have to do, but what we are given the chance to do is to hear them, and that they wish to be expressed just like we wish to express ourselves, that these ideas want to be incorporated and made real in life. The ideas are not only ours, they are in the new sphere, as they would say. It's in the, the space. It's around us. And this idea that the genius is the one who brings this to you. I would invite you to look in your own life to see if, uh, if that hasn't happened to you, that somehow you didn't know how to do something, but then you did it. You just happened to do it, and it worked out for you. That there might be partners that we have in the invisible world who are really willing and able to help us. I know there have been um, surgeons who've said, you know, they felt like something was guiding them. There have been stories of leaders who led their, their people away from danger. They didn't know where the idea came from. It seems to be that we're more blessed than just ourselves at work in some circumstances, but often something else is working through us. I believe in, to some degree, if we're inviting the divine to speak through us, we might also realize that the divine uses subsets of the divine to speak through us. We used to call them angels. We used to call them our messengers or our helpers. And many people who are mystical seem to feel like they have this connection with something other than the absolute or the absolute human. And so they are able to draw upon that wisdom of the other. Why this is important in a, in a conversation about creating the world around us, I think um, it is to open us up to the possibility that it's not really just us little human beings and the great divine, but there is a ecosystem of spirit out there that wishes to create a better and better experience here on earth that is actually 
the, their helpers who are helping us along the way, that we have different layers of our unfolding that we could do if we would give ourselves wholly over to this idea that we are not just human beings, but we are spirits wishing to unfold into greater expression that we too might unfold into the ascended master state. We might have powers that we don't have right now. Think of it if you actually did have a guardian angel who's helped you avoid car accidents and eating things that might hurt you or kept you out of physical danger in many ways or has guided you to your, toward your career or to people you need to know. Wouldn't that be as good an explanation as anything for what's happening? That something is on your side, that you really have never, ever been alone, that this whole journey, this whole experience of being you might be, in essence, a communal activity. That the community of the angels has been on your side. That something other than what we can see is guiding you along your way to blend those two ideas, that we could blend them into a more magical world, a world where it is quirky and fun, where we see coincidences and we wonder what signs and wonders mean to us, rather than just being mundane human beings, of which I have practiced most of my life. Maybe we could explore and see if the world that we live in might have more dimensions than the eyes can see or our fingers can touch. As we do this, I think we give ourselves permission to be more than we have been before, to be more powerful, to be more compassionate, to see around the corners of what is presented to us, to understand the underlying causes, to touch the world in such a way that we inspire it by our willingness to be happy, to be curious, and to be in communion with all that is.